I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> In conformance with the Open Public Meeting Law, Public Law 1975, Chapter 251, or Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting setting forth the time, date, place, and purpose of this regular meeting through notice posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building, mailed to all who requested and paid for same, and published in the suburban trend. Roll call, please. Mayor, sir. Here. Council President Rankin. Here. Councilman Day. Here. Councilman Delinas, excused. Yes. Councilman Jacanetta. Here. Councilwoman Polidori. Here. Councilman Bennon. Here. With us this evening is our borough attorney, Joseph Ragno, and our borough administrator, Kevin Boyle. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have some presentations tonight. I'm going to start with our police life saving award. So if the chief would like to step forward. First of all, let me thank the mayor and council for providing me this opportunity to recognize some of my officers in the department. Um, it's not often that we get the opportunity to recognize them in public, and what they accomplished in the last two months has been incredible. I think they need to be recognized. I'd like to start bringing them up one by one. Sergeant Jonathan Williams. Detective Daniel Cottrell. Detective Brian Zimmerman. Patrolman Peter Ford. Patrolman John LaGreco. We have five officers here that uh, range in uh, experience from uh, Sergeant Williams, who has 12 years on the job. Uh, Detective Patrol and uh, Detective Zerman have seven years on the job. Patrolman P. Ford has a year and a half as a regular officer and a year and a half as a special officer. And uh, Patrolman Liv Greco is our newest member of the department with nine months on. Uh, back on October 26th of this, I'm sorry, September 26th of this year, we received a call from one of the residents in town uh, requiring medical assistance. It was a resident of Spruce Street. Uh, what happened was the husband was found to be unconscious. Uh, he was bleeding from the head and he wasn't breathing. These five officers responded uh, to the call. Uh, it's also note, should be noted that the man also had undergone a spinal surgery about 10 days earlier. Uh, they went there to the call. They bandaged the uh, man's head. They stopped the bleeding. Uh, they performed CPR until the paramedics and the first day squad arrived to continue with it. And because of their quick response, their actions, and the teamwork, they resulted in saving this man's life. Uh, so tonight I take great pride in presenting them with the department's life-saving award. And the life-saving award is for an act performed in the line of duty which through the disregard of personal life or for prompt and direct action resulted in the saving of a person's life. And this man is alive today because he has an angel. Thank you very much. Round of applause for your final. Yeah. 
Yeah, the short guy's gonna go away. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem in saying we probably have one of the best police forces around. Most of them are all homegrown. They came from town here. They all care about Pompton Lakes, and they will always respond when someone's there, no matter what's going on. So, you know, we, we all forget with what our volunteer and, and paid uh, forces do. They're there when we need us. You know, I know the police department is out there 12 hours a day, 12-hour shifts. Those are long shifts, long days. Um, the fire department calls to every call that goes out. So. We sometimes forget what they're doing to them. So I thank you all, and I'm sure the mayor and council all thank you. Okay, anybody who wants to leave from that ceremony can. <laughs> okay, we're going to move forward now with another great uh, group we have in town, our, our pride group. They're going to give out their essay award contest, and I'm going to ask Steve, is that Steve Rayberg, to come up and uh, give out the award. Thank you. So, uh, once a year, the uh, Lake Restoration Committee, also known as Pride, um, has uh, some form of contest to bring attention to our uh, waterway and. Yeah. Um, Steve? Just go in front, see your mic. What a, what a great uh, asset they are, and how important it is to. Um, to care for them. And so this past year we had um, a, uh, an English composition contest, and this contest was divided into uh, three levels, elementary, basically elementary, middle school, and high school. Our uh, public schools and St. Mary's all contrib uh, contributed, participated in the contest, and they, uh, the teachers themselves um, um, guided the, the children uh, through the contest and also picked the winners. And so tonight we're going to honor the winners um, and give um, uh, awards to the, the first place winners in each of the three categories and some runners up. And the winners in each category are going to get a new computer, a Chromebook, um, courtesy of the borough. So if I could start with the um, <coughs> elementary level, we'll work from, from uh, the bottom up. Um, the winner of the elementary level um, Contest is Sophia Adair. Is she here? Is she uh, is your teacher, uh, Ms. Martini? Is she? Is she Martini? Well, you know, you had a lot to do with this, too. Um, I thought maybe you could read that, if you don't mind. Just have a yeah. Wait a second, if she doesn't get a microphone, it won't be recorded. Oh, okay. If you don't mind standing up here, you can do it. Be, they can hear you on television when you're on television. Okay? Okay, just talk. Come on over here. Yay, another visitor I thought to myself as they sat on me. I could feel the warmth of their bodies against me. They leaned back against me and sat there like people do almost every day. After all, I am a bench, a small brown old bench sitting on the shore of Thompson Lake. Watch out, someone yelled. I turned around to see who it was. It was a young girl with some black glasses on with like an older man with some blue glasses on. I almost looked like it was his daughter. They headed to the dock, pulled out some worms, and picked up a small fishing rod and a big one. Oh, yay, they were going to fish. I love to watch people fish. I moved my eyes slightly to the left and saw some kids playing on the park. Push me harder, one kid called out while sitting on the swing. I'll try. I don't want you to go too high, he called back, not so calm. Suddenly, a cute little brown dog walked up and sniffed me. Ha ha, it felt like someone was tickling me. I also love that feel. You got one, someone said. As I turned my head back to the fishers, I saw that the young girl caught a big rainbow trout. I like watching people fish because I love watching their expressions as they catch a slimy little fish or a slimy big fish. As I think about all this, I realize I really do love this place. As I breathed in a deep breath, I realized I was all alone and everyone slowly left. The fisherman and his daughter, the three little kids playing on the park, the couples walking, the cute little brown dog, and all the other people and animals. 
They were all gone. It was just me watching some small boats and kayaks floating on the glistening blue water. Above, I noticed the beautiful reddish pink sky as the sun began to set. What a beautiful day at Pompton Lake. First of all, you get that. And then you get this. <laughs> the, um, the first runner up uh, from the uh, elementary, uh, elementary group is uh, uh, Beatrice Samarero. Is she here today? We had this for you, but if you wouldn't mind, you have to come over here, though. Oh, God, I'm terrified. (laughs) (laughs) Me too, don't worry. (laughs) My mom. I remember years ago when I was just a young birch along the shore of beautiful of the beautiful greenish blue lake, Crompton Lake. Sorry. Every day I would wake up and think, I love this view. I mean, not all trees get get a view over a lake like me and my friends, maple and oak. Each day visitors would come and sit in my shade. One visitor was named Bea. She would come with her mother and she would sit on my trumpet trunk and sketch. And in the meanwhile, her mother would walk around collecting berries from my bush friends. She came every day, and each week she would draw she would draw a drawing, and she kept working on it the entire week. One day I decided to take a peek. Oh my God, that's so beautiful. I love it. If I could only talk, I would tell her how beautiful her sketch is. So once a week I would peek at her drawing and see what she would draw. For years and years she came every day. She would work on the drawing of the week, but one day her mother did not come to to pick berries with her, but she came and sat on the other side of my trunk. She tried to sketch, I thought. Why is she not picking berries like she had for the past 16 years? Then all of a sudden I heard, Mother, isn't it a beautiful view out here? Yes, it is, Bea. I've always wondered why you come here every day, but now I know why. For the next hour and a half they would both sketch until until it started to rain. So in the rain, they pinned their drawings to my trunk each week until so many people of all ages came, until so many people of all ages came and pinned their drawings to my trunk. So soon I was filled with drawings, watercolor paintings and sketches, all of magnificent prompts and like. Thank you. Second runner up uh, in the elementary category is from um, St. Mary, Jason Blessing. Do you have That's for you, and there's one for us. You wouldn't mind if it get through that. <coughs> the title of my poem is called Fun at Popton Lake. Popton Lake is a lake filled with happiness and many joys. There are so many things to do and see to entertain all of the young girls and boys. You can play on the playground, running around and having fun. Or maybe you can hang out in the shady gazebo to get away from the bright sun. You can go fishing for pike or boating with friends. Whatever you do at Popton Lake, the fun never ends. If you want to go to a special place to freely roam, go to Pompton Lake because it is like a second home. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on to the uh, middle school level, uh, the the, uh, first place winner, uh, grades uh, six through eight, Eric Moyer. Congratulations. Could you, uh, <laughs> it's a poem. 
Thank you. The Ponce and Lake. The rippling reflection of the sun bounces off the clear water of the Ponce and Lake into the eyes of the men, waiting to feel the touch of the water beneath their toes. The sound of, the la- the sound of laughing, the gentle touch of water, the sight of the clear blue sky, and the hope that the day will never end. The wind blows with a soft kiss as the sound of splashing fills my head. I jump, feel- I jump feeling like I am falling until I hit the layered surface of the water. I feel the sand sitting at the bottom, people having fun, and the day of summer just begin. The radio blasting, the sounds of crunching, and the noise of splashing from the many fishes swimming. The family suck and the friends bicker as the day at the lake is starting. <laughs> By the way, did I mention that there were some 200 entries wow. um, among both schools for this contest? Although, um, and, and last year when we did the art contest, the same, I think a couple of hundred entries last year as well. So the school's participation um, is pretty amazing. And uh, you can see this, the quality of the work that they do. So the first runner up um, to middle school is Sophia Tortis for the ceiling. In the four seasons of the year, the beauty of the Pompton Lake is very clear. In the summer, during sunrise, the sun shines against the lake so bright, it brings the whole town light. The water turns the color of Pacific blue, where you can pile your own canoe. At the time of noon, children play at the park on the many colored swings and slides until the sky turns dark. When night comes and the place turns quiet, you can hear the ripples swishing in the silence. In the fall mornings, you can hear the bluebirds sing their song and say sweet, and many people take a run or ride their bikes around the lake because they are athletes. You can see all the leaves changing colors, and the weather gets colder since the summer. During lunch, people sit on the benches to have picnics, and people go on hikes around the lake using walking sticks. In the evening, the place turns cold, but the sight of the lakes never gets old. In the winter, the mornings sometimes have snowfall, and people come to the park and have fights with snowballs. The lake freezes, and before it's melting, people like to go down the hills and onto the lake sledding. When it's cold enough, people go ice skating, and the scene of a frozen lake and the snowy trees is amazing. It looks like a perfect winter wonderland, and to have such a great attraction to so close is really grand. In the spring, the early mornings sometimes have showers, but they help bloom the spring flowers. People start to play on the playground once again, where people have fun and meet new friends. The temperatures start to get a little warm, but sometimes there is thunderstorms. People go fishing in the lake, and the trees start to turn green, and it's so beautiful, it looks sake. As you can see, the view of the lake is very alluring, alluring all over, and having such a great sight so close is not having like a four-leaf clover. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, second runner-up in middle um, school is uh, Paul DeSonda. On our lake, I see sunrises and sunsets, fog that settles and a duck that rests. A day of community on Pompton Day, crafty vendors and games to play. It's a day that marks summer's end with a celebration of fireworks with our friends. Summer times with fishing poles and bait at the boathouse dock on our beautiful lake. There's a playground for kids, a swing, a slide, a gazebo for gathering by our lake with pride. Okay, moving up to the uh, high school level. Um, we have a winner and a, and a runner-up. The, uh, the winner at the high school level is Heather DeBoer. She also went for the shortest. <laughs> Three high <haikus. laughs> Waves crash the lake shore, never skipping a moment. Old friends coming home. 
Boats on the water, people fishing and swimming, nothing needs to change. Our very own lake, the shared moments of joy, bringing us closer. Thank you very much. Okay, the uh, first runner-up was at high school level, Megan McCoy. Megan here. Compton is my home, my story to tell. It's never been like heaven, but neither like hell. We have our groups, but always love to share. Of course, we get caught up in things people can't bear. You'll never be alone, not in this town. I swear, someone is always around. No reason to fear or, or bottle up inside. Every hug is never to hide. Compton is a family with struggles but care. No matter what obstacle, there is nothing we can't bear. If, um, that, that's all the, the uh, awards. I want to thank uh, everybody who participated. And if I could, ask all of the winners, the runner-ups, and their teachers to stand for a second. For the award. We don't know what the pride is, but you know, obviously you'll be here for the resource. They do a great job in keeping our lakes quality that we have here. Not all towns have a pride group. We have to have an excellent one that does a lot of work with our our lakes in the community. A group of almost a group of almost followers. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mrs. Martini. Uh, very nice for your first year teaching. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, to hear those kids speak so well in front of a microphone, you got to give them credit just for doing that. Um, forget the, the poems were excellent. Uh, okay, let's have a motion to open the meeting for public comments. So moved. Yeah. Councilman Venon, Council President Riker, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Come on up, please. Good evening. My name is Walter Boudreaux from Iron Ford. Midrise. Last meeting I, I was here. <clears throat> uh, 
they, this, we, uh, it was discussed in recent wars regarding marijuana. I'm all, I think I'm all for, ch I don't know all the laws about it, but I think I'm for changing the penalties. Uh, I think they're pretty stringent from what I understand for minor offenses and things like that. But we had some people <coughs> that were here speaking about the subject that want a lot more than that. And I wanted to, I, it, 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 conf, it confounds me why people would come in a cold winter day to come to another town with piles of research to convince us that we should have stores in our town that our children pass by every day where they sell marijuana. Okay? It doesn't make sense to me. Um, why all this research and all these study groups and universities to convince us, the great unwashed, it is wonderful to propagate marijuana in our towns and make it more available to our children. Um, so, and it just so happens a day after, a day or two after that, there was a great article in, I think it was the record, <coughs> written by Cardinal Alley. So I made a couple of copies. I'm just going to give them up. You got yeah, give them to the clerk and she'll be able to pass them out. It's very good information. Okay. Very points. That's a downside legalizing marijuana and making it more readily available to the, to the public in general, not to mention the younger population. And I'm not going to go into it too much. Um, <coughs> But, um, you know, there's another organization that makes the money from selling drugs and using gambling. It's called the mob. That's all I got to say. Okay, well, thank you. You know, this is it's not going to be money. It's all about money. This is not going to be a, a, something that we're going to settle up here today. But right, that's I, I, my opinion. I'm sure your opinion is more than welcome. Um, what I, I'll tell you is the the laws that are govern how 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 the penalties are will come from the state. They won't come from us. Uh, you know, there's still a lot of uh, talk about it. We don't know where it's going. There's going to be guidelines that we're going to be required to follow. Uh, if I'm correct, they've already. Um, so we'll see where that goes. I mean, I, they'll be debating on both sides. There'll be yeah. focus groups, as you, as you mentioned, the groups. There'll be focus groups from both sides talking yeah. about it. Uh, you know, we understand what you're talking about with the children. We understand uh, the mentality of what, what people are thinking about when it comes to selling drugs in, in town. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see what the state does first. Yeah. yeah. Let's not uh, roll over and die, though. Does it mean... Uh you have to roll over and die, and no, of course you have to make all the rules and regulations for us. That's true. Thanks a lot. Have Thank you. Thanks, Anyone else from the public like to address? Mr. Grayberg. Uh, <clears throat> Steve Grayberg, 86 Glen Court, uh, representing the, this evening the Lake Restoration Committee. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the uh, Mayor and Council and the administration for their ongoing support of the, the Lake Committee and uh, the things that it does, both uh, financially and operationally. Um, you can see, I think, tonight that uh, another good thing has come of that. Um, and um, I point out that the photos behind, behind that are uh, from a prior contest, and that now that the lake is, uh, is back to its uh, original upright position, we'll be returning to a photo contest uh, this year, um, giving away some personal watercrafts as we have in the past, and coming up with... Um, you're saying you're giving away boats? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Because you know, well, I might go into that picture. You know, <laughs> take a good picture, you know. Um, you know, small yachts, very small. Okay. <laughs> Ten-foot ten kayaks. Bob's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so by ho this time next year, hopefully we'll have a new set of pictures and be able to... Uh, uh, those are great, but they've been there a couple of years. It's time to, to switch them out. So that uh, progress is being made, as you can see. Um, 
the um, in planning for the treatment this year, I'm going to be setting up a meeting shortly with uh, Solitude Lake, who's been doing a terrific job on the lake. But now things, uh, some parameters have obviously have changed because we've opened up the, the delta again, and um, we want to make sure that uh, we don't screw up anything, and at the same time, we make sure we want to treat the, the lake in a proper priority. So um, I'll invite um, Mayor and Council, and, and uh, of course, uh, Mr. Boyle, uh, to that meeting. I'll try to get them uh, in at a regularly scheduled Lake Restoration Committee meeting, which is the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, if not, I'll pick an alternative, but we'll let you know. Um, try to get everybody together that needs to be um, involved so that we can make uh, the best plan for this coming season. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, lastly, um, you know, we were hoping uh, as we watched the boat launch on Lakeside Avenue kind of deteriorate over the last couple of years, that the pond would see, I mean, Camores would see fit to find some reason where they should fix it. And they didn't. Um, so, um, and unless you want to try to see if they'll, um, they'll go back and take care of that for us, um, we need to, um, we're going to probably have to step up and, and get that fixed. I don't know if uh, anybody brought it to your attention. And the reason we haven't is because we were hoping that it would come out in the wash. Uh, no pun intended. But uh, since it hasn't, it's, it's becoming uh, actually a safety hazard um, because cars that back the trailers into, into the launch hit a point where they, there's like, it's almost like potholes, deep potholes, where a car will get caught. And then trying to pull a boat out of the water when you're stuck in a hole like that. Is, um, requires a little bit of um, um, savvy, and, and not everybody has that. So it, it, uh, it could become a safety hazard. It's definitely a, a, an annoyance and a concern for even the most routine uh, boaters. So um, something to, uh, to put on the docket for possibly the open space funds now that we have um, permission to use that. Um, I'm not, I don't want to specify where it should come from, but we should um, uh, we are going to have to take a close look at that and, and come up with a solution before um, it completely deteriorates and can't be used. So um, sorry to bring that bad news, but you know, it, it happens. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let's start with your last question first. Um, you know, we can first send our DPW to take a look at it and see what they can do. And I have some connections over at Tilcon, and they're more than welcome to come and use their machinery and, and give us stone if we need be to flatten that out and make it more flat flatter over there to work. So I think that's something we could probably work out between the three groups. But um, the, the bigger picture would be uh, figuring out how we're going to handle the, the truck, the, the trailers, and the cars that are there now, which is becoming a major issue for us. Uh, because unfortunately, we're one of the only communities that has a free lake. So if I, if I don't want to go to Oakland and I don't want to pay $20 to put my boat in, I'll go to Pompton. I can put it in for free if I'm not from Pompton. So we are looking at addressing that with a permitting process maybe down the line here, which would help with that because I've also reached out to the Elks to see if they're willing to maybe work with us to, to park some boats. They're looking into the idea themselves. Uh, it's not fair to the neighborhoods in that area there to have all the trailers parked there all the time. So uh, it's something we're going to have to address and, and see where we can go with that. Um, the second two parts, you know, you guys do a great job, like I said before. These, these programs you run for the kids, you get them enthused, they get them, they want to come out, they want to be involved, you get a lot of participation, which, which is a great thing to see. You know, just another group in Pompton that really goes out of their way to make things better, and you guys do that with the lake, so we, we all thank you for that. Um, and the, uh, the only thing I will say about the treatment of the lake is I don't know the parameters, if there's anything involved with uh, Comores and the work they did, if there's some type of insurance that, you know, nothing happens to that. Planting, so that's something we might have to address. I don't know if that is. We have agreed to have that in the session. Okay. Okay. So thank you. Anyone else from the public like to address? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public session? So moved. Council President Riker. Second. Second. Councilman Bennett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay. Approval of minutes. Motion to approve the following minutes. Regular meeting minutes of November 7th, 2018. Regular meeting minutes of uh, November 28, 2018. Can I have a motion? Well, it's the corrected minutes. Corrected, yes. No. It doesn't say corrected. Is it not corrected? No, it doesn't. Yes, it is corrected. No, don't you say, corrected. Does it say that? Yeah, it's corrected, but I just put it on for reapproval. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay, just reapproval. Right. Okay. Yeah. Correction. Okay. All right, so let's take them separate. Then the first uh, one is the regular meeting minutes of November 7th. 
2018. Have a motion. Right. Council President Riker. Second. Councilwoman Paldori. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Okay, and then the corrected minutes of November 28, 2018. We have a motion. So moved. Councilman Jackmatter. Second. Well, I thought they were corrected. I think the seventh is corrected. The seventh is corrected. Oh, all right. So, so, so the first one is corrected. Just note that in the minutes. <laughs> note the minutes that we're fixing the minutes. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Councilman Jack and Anna, Councilman Benin with the yes. second one. All right. Okay. Uh, bills and claims. Motion to approve the following bills as listed below. So moved. Councilman Begg. Second. Councilman Benin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Consent agenda whenever you're ready. Does anyone wish to have any resolutions vote? Nope. No. Whereas the Mayor Council of the Borough of Taunton Lakes has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions, whereas the Mayor Council of the Borough of Taunton Lakes does not desire to move resolution for individual action from that agenda, now therefore be it resolved that the following resolution on the consent agenda are hereby approved. Resolution 18209 through 18-222. Okay, motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Councilwoman Riker. Second. Councilman Giacometta. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Resolutions for separate action. Okay, the first one is resolution 18-210, authorizing the execution of a shared service agreement with the Borough of Bloomingdale for mechanical services for municipal vehicles for the Department of Public Works, Police Department, and Fire Department, effective January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2023. Okay, so this is a resolution in reference to we're going to do a shared service, which the state is always asking about to do a shared service. They have a full mechanic set up over in Bloomingdale with a garage and all the computer equipment needed to do that. We do not have that here. We have no equipment. We have no lifts. We were sending out most of our stuff to get uh, fixed. This is a, a pretty uh, good service agreement for us. We have to hire a mechanic over in Bloomingdale to, to pick up our load because we have a lot of large load of trucks and cars going over. But moving forward, I think it'll be a benefit for both of us and, and a good shared service. Any questions? From okay. Motion to approve resolution 18 2010. So moved. 210. Um, Councilman Begg? Second. Councilman Vennon, roll call, please. Councilman Begg. Tim Begg. Councilman Begg. Yes. Uh, Councilman Dorn. Uh, Councilman Jackson. Yes. Councilwoman Paul Dory. Yes. Councilwoman Ranker. Yes. Councilman Vennon. Yes. Resolution 18-211, authorizing the execution of shared service agreement with the Borough of Bloomingdale for the purchase of gas and diesel fuel for municipal vehicles effective January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2023. So following up with what I just spoke about, we are going to get our gasoline also from them through a, uh, a card, if, and if the administrator wants to mention. Let me explain. Right now, we receive all of our gasoline, we can't just take it from the garage. Uh, the garage is going to be a funk for the next few years. On top of that, if I lot of the garage already where we go, we try to fill up, and there's no gas. They have missed time their gas deliveries when we can't gas it by vehicles, kind of a line or Riverdale. Because Pompton Lakes, but the county garage in Bloomingdale, by a state contract, the cost of us to, 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 to the fuel is, is the net neutral. All we have to pay for is the key fobs. Thousand dollars to have to keep out there making gas of the car. So for us, it makes more sense to find another partner, copiers anyway. This takes that out of the picture and move forward now and move on. And there's no, again, there's no uh, other cost for us except for the key fobs the gas and whatever we pay can be bought from the county for what they are because state country. And it would be a, a separate record just kept for us. That's the key fob. That's the, the key fob, yeah. Okay, any questions? Okay, can I have a motion? To approve uh, resolution 18 to 11. So moved. Councilman Begg. Second. Council President Riker. Roll call, please. <coughs> Councilman Begg. Yes. Councilman Giaconetta. Yes. Councilwoman Port Polidori. Yes. Councilwoman Riker. Yes. Councilman Begg. Yes. Resolution 18 212, authorizing the execution of a shared service agreement with the Borough of Wanaku for payroll administration and processing services effective Janu January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2021. 
And this is just following what we just mentioned above, which is the payroll. Okay. Um, Mary Ember Deasy does our payroll. She's a chief financial officer and wanted. When Peggy Cohen retired, you and Hassel, two years ago now, Mary Ann came on as an employee. Um, there's a lot of change going on in Wanaki. The administrator's leaving, things that on. So our concern was is that we had pretty much, she works for us, she kind of works on the schedules. Our concern was we had to share a service agreement that would take any potential problem when we have a payroll issue down the road. It doesn't cost us any more money. The, the, the dollar value is the same with issues on our payroll or on payroll. And it just kind of cleans up that issue this way. Nobody can have an issue saying, well, I want her back. Monday and Tuesday, you can't have it. I think it kind of keeps us on, on, on an even keel. Okay. Excellent. Any questions? Okay. Can I have a motion to approve Resolution 18 to 12? So moved. Council President Rankin. Second. Second. Councilwoman Paldori. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Day. Yes. Councilman Jackanetta. Yes. Councilwoman Paldori. Yes. Councilwoman Riker. Yes. Councilman Day. Yes. Okay, ordinances for second reading and final adoption. Okay, these ordinances have been advertised. Uh, ordinance 18-27, an ordinance amending section 2-5060, open space trust fund. Do we want to uh, mention it? I, I get, you know, this is going back to changing the open space funds to be used for parameters that have been set. It went out to referendum um, and it passed. By a pretty large margin, so uh, this is following up on a uh, second reading on this. Can I have a motion to open the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 1827? So moved. Moved. Councilman Jackanetta, Councilman Denning, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Against? Anyone from the public like to address just this ordinance? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 18 27? So moved. Council President Riker? Second. Councilwoman Paldori? All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion to approve Ordinance 1827 for final adoption. So moved. Councilman Vetter. Councilman Jacanetta, roll call, please. <clears throat> Councilman Day. Yes. Councilman Jacanetta. Yes. Councilwoman Polidori. Yes. Councilman Riker. Yes. Councilwoman. Councilman. I know, you gotta, you got to get them all straight. <laughs> Councilman Bay. <laughs> yes. Ordinance 18-28, an ordinance establishing a redevelopment plan for certain properties located along, on, or in the immediate vicinity of Hamburg Turnpike in the Borough of Compton Lakes, designating the Borough Redevelopment Agency as the redevelopment entity for the Hamburg Redevelopment Area and establishing the Hamburg Redevelopment Area Zoning District, HRA1, as an overlay zone to the existing zone, 9 Hamburg Turnpike, Block 2800, Lot 11. The purpose, the purpose of this ordinance is to create a separate uh, redevelopment area since the uh, property, the current one property involved in this redevelopment area is not in, uh, is not contiguous to your current redevelopment zones. Okay. Motion to open the meeting for public comments on Ordinance 18 28. <clears throat> Council President Reger? Second. Councilman Bay? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Anyone like to address just this ordinance? Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close the public meeting, the public comments for Ordinance 18-28? So moved. Councilman Bennett? Second. Councilman Jacanetta? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion to approve Ordinance 18-28 for final adoption. So moved. Councilman Begg? Second. Council President Riker? If I, if I may. Sure. Uh, on the first regular meeting of January, you will get another ordinance which will uh, provide the uh, zoning regulations for the new overlay zone uh, so that they can be codified. Okay. Roll call, please. No, did you do that? No. Yeah. We did a roll call already? No. No, no you're no. not. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Councilman Bay. Yes. Councilman Jackanet. Yes. Councilwoman Polidori. Yes. Councilwoman Ranker. Yes. Councilman Bay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, under my report, this has been a busy week. <coughs> we'll, probably everybody was involved in the same events, but we'll go through them. Uh, Toys for Tot, another big hit over in town. i got to thank Tim Trost for putting that together and taking it on. Uh, you know, I love to see the residents come out and fill a train with toys that we're sending out to the Marines. 
You know, uh, I have people from other towns who come in to see that because they follow the train up as it's going to other places. They said, by far, we had the biggest turnout of people. So that's always nice to hear that the public's coming out. So again, I, I thank Tim Trost for that. You might have heard that our radio station is back on air right now. It's AM 1560 for the people who are new to town, for the people who are older. They, they remember it well. Uh, so it is up and running now. It's just running on a computer program right now until we work out some finances with the station that would like to take it over. But uh, you can tune into it right now and listen to 1560. It's been a long time that it, it's been off. Actually, 1500. Oh, 1500, I'm sorry. Yeah, Mark 1500. AM. AM, yes, How AM. Much? I'm sorry, AM. How much? You know, you know it's a station that is it's actually transmitting out of New York State under the name of Wall, Wall Radio, the ALL. So you hear that as, as the original call letters. They actually have our call letters in, in, on the hour. Oh, okay. Excellent. And there is a radio station that is still interested in purchasing it and taking it over and running it as a full-fledged radio station out of Pompton Lakes. We're still working out that deal, but in the meanwhile, it's up and running, so that's always good news. Um, I attended a flood meeting uh, yesterday with the administrator, uh, with a couple mayors from surrounding towns, and the D, uh, the DM, the DPW, the DEP, <laughs> the DEP. Uh, there was some concern from mayors downstream from us that their flooding had been worse this year than in previous years. Of course, they wanted to try to throw the blame on Pompton Lakes, but uh, we do what we're supposed to do here in Pompton Lakes, and we clean our rivers. And uh, I think what came out of the meeting, and I'm going to go over some statistics out of it, but what really came out of the meeting, what they said was, we had our storms, the, flood, the rivers did what they were going to do and, and raise and lower, but when the Wanakee started spilling over, once it reached 100% max, it flooded all the other rivers downstream, and rivers actually started backing up, and people who are involved with flooding understand that the water flow could sometimes start backing, going backwards up the river, and the downstream towns where this happened, that's why they flooded. So they have a lot of data to show that, that that's what happened. Um, there was a lot of talk about from the mayors who are newer to this and the mayors that have been involved a long time about lowering the reservoirs, which has always been a big discussion here. Uh, my, my statement at the time was, right now I am not worried, you know, this week, next week, the next month. But, you know, we had April coming and May coming. Our reservoir is 100 percent. You know, but that would be nice if somehow we could lower that by April to get it down a little bit to expect the water that's coming in April. So, uh, you know, our concern is always in the springtime is really a heavy time for us to get rain. They listened to those ideas. The, the meeting was held to, to talk about the fact how the gate is operating and if it was operating properly. The DEP feels the uh, gate is operating properly. It is doing what it's supposed to do. And I have to always remind people it's not a, a dam which holds back water. It's a flood gate that lets water through. There is a big difference. So, you know, that dam is not made to hold back water. So if that was to fill up with water, there could be problems. That's why they release the pressure off the dam and let water out. They use a computer model to figure out how to let the water out of the uh, dam. And it's safe, set to open three inches at a time uh, every 15 minutes until the water level is where they need to be on the computer. Occasionally, in a horrible storm, they might open it at six inches at a time. But the last time that happened was Sandy. Most of the time, it's only three inches. Knock on wood, we've been very lucky here in Pompton Lakes. With our rivers right at top bank and filled, we haven't spilled out of our rivers. But towns like Wayne and Lincoln Park and Fairfield, um, they all did flood. So that's why they had this meeting. What came out of the meeting, and I think the administrator would agree with me, we do a very good job here. Another good group we have here is our Flood Advisory Board. They do a great job in, with the administrator and staff here in keeping our rivers clean of debris and uh, you know, doing, getting the permits needed, which is a year and a half to get a permit to, to work in the rivers. So some of the mayors from other towns had reached out at that meeting to us and said, would you help us work with that process to get permits and work on their rivers? Look, the, the, more, the more towns that clean up the rivers, if we clean all the rivers from here all the way to the bay, that's a good thing. Um, the problem is if one town decides not to clean up their river from debris and, and skull and dirt that's building up, it backs all the water up. I think some of the towns now are starting to realize this is a way to go. So, I, you know, our own neighbor Wayne said it looks like they want to try to work out an agreement with us and maybe do some work, which would be great because we share a lot of the same rivers. So it was a good meeting. I'm glad it was called. 
um, you know, in, in the DEP in typical fashion said that's not something we can talk about. This is the floodgate management group, and this is not the reservoir group which you have to talk about. Um, so a couple of the mayors were concerned that maybe we need to talk to the reservoir group to see how they – but uh, the one thing I know from doing this a little bit is most of the reservoirs in our area have no release mechanism, and I'm sure Councilman Jack and Eddie could talk to this a little bit. They weren't built with a, a, a release or a, a tube on the bottom to let water out of it when they were built. So it's very hard to let water out of a reservoir. It's not that simple. But maybe it's something they want to look at putting into reservoirs and maybe going back and discussing how to put something in. My opinion, this is just my personal opinion, if they have 101% filled in one or reservoir right now, dropping it to 95% before April, gives us five inches or, or five feet of water to work with a little bit before we're flooding. Now, big rain, we're still flooding, but it does give us a little time. That's bigger people than me are making those decisions. This has been a conversation that's been going on for 20 years and probably will continue for another 20 years, but that's what the meeting was about. Uh, we had the holiday stroll, which was a great event, as always here. Uh, I have to thank the bid and Rob Walker, who put that together. They are, they are in charge of the stroll and the tree lighting. It's always nice to see people out and talking and taking their time as they walk around, talking to the neighbors, and, and it's always fun to see the kids that are very, very excited uh, with Santa Claus coming. This year, was uh, for people who weren't there, it was the big Mickey Mouse 90-year uh, birthday party. So Mickey Mouse came out and lit the tree this year, which I, I see that some of the kids were very excited about. Uh, at all in all, though, a very nice event. They had uh, many areas for the kids to go out. Most of the businesses did step forward and helped out in some way or another, and uh, just another outstanding event here for Pompton Lakes. The same day, uh, we had our mosque that just moved into town, had their uh, opening, their grand opening. They invited some of us here on the council went. They did a very nice presentation. Uh, you know, I, I hopefully believe, and I really do believe, that they're going to work with our community. They want to be part of our community. They don't want to, um, they want to be part of everything we do and invite us to the things they do. For some of us, including myself, it is a little culture shock to see a different group out there. But, you know, you have to get used to the fact that these people are in our community and they want to work with us and they want to make our community better, at the same time making their, their mosque a, a, an area of worship for themselves. So I was very impressed with the setup. I met with the Eman there, who, who, is, uh, who was there. He's only there once, once a week. Um, he comes in from somewhere else. But uh, I can't say more praise than they did a very beautiful job in the, in the ceremony. There was probably 100, 150 people, all kinds of uh, people from the fire department to the clergy from the church, from the council. So I, I think they really do want to be part of our community, and that's a good thing. Uh, just going back to the letter that was received from DuPont, anybody who lives in the plume would have received the letter and, and was addressed already, basically stating the permit by rule, which has been the uh, argument for the last year and a half, if they're going to do it or not going to do it. The DEP has ruled they will not be doing the permit by rule, which is basically a pilot test to see how to move some water underneath the plume and move some things through the aquifer. There were a lot of concern, including from council up here, about flooding of homes if they did that. The DEP, I will give them credit, did listen to the residents and uh, through scientific backing of what they feel would work and wouldn't work has decided to deny the permit. So they will not be doing that, uh, that permit. The DEP, I was on the phone with the DEP today, they will be um, sending out a newsletter uh, just updating everybody on what goes on in Comores and what their plans are for the future. Everyone who's on, their e on the EPA or the DEP's mailing list will get it. If you would like to be on that mailing list, even if you don't live in the plume, you can just leave your uh, email address with our clerk and she'll get it over to the DEP and they're going to send out a buy uh, annual uh, newsletter. It's a combination between the EPA and the DEP. There'll be question and answer in there and there'll be some uh, updated information. So if you're interested in receiving that, please reach out to them. And that is my report. Council President Riker. Mayor, let me just ask you a question. As of in the year 2019, are we still having the EPA coming here on Thursday? Sure, yes. That's still in their budget? Yeah. Okay. And there is talk, and it hasn't happened yet, but there is talk that maybe the DEP will be here also at some point. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to congratulate the uh, police officers who are honored here this evening. Uh, I was remarking to Councilman Day that you know, we've sat here and had many different honorees, and uh, frankly, I, I didn't remember that ceremony, and if it was, it wasn't any time in the very um, recent past. Um, 
I really enjoy when we get the kids and their parents and their teachers in the council chambers. Uh, it gives us a sense of, of sort of what we're all about and what the community is all about. And I especially smiled when the when the young girl who had come up, I, I think she was in uh, elementary school, came up and she said, I'm terrified. <laughs> and she started to read and, she, and her, her mother was the one who said, not so fast. And she was reading quickly, but by the time she got about halfway through, she slowed down on her own and she started reading it with all sorts of emphasis and really with expression and I, and I was really smiling back here because I'm sitting there thinking, this is somebody who's going to want that microphone again in the, in the future. I said, you know, this is really a wonderful opportunity for them. So um, Steve again, congratulations Steve Graeber, congratulations in terms of what you do with the, the pride and I don't know what the plan is for next year but you know, you know whether it's a photo contest, a writing contest or whatever but um, congratulations, really, really a job well done. Um, I, I, I'm not going to be repetitive in terms of what the mayor did. I just, um, it, it, I, I did feel that we were very lucky with the toy train, the toys to toss train, because um, we had gorgeous weather when that when that train arrived, and we didn't have such gorgeous weather a few hours later. So um, it was wonderful to see everybody come out, and, and you could see. I think people were relieved because by then the, the stroll had been canceled due to inclement weather, but boy, we had a sunny, beautiful day, and I think that, that again helped up people coming out there. Lots of people with strollers and little ones, so um, it, was, it, was, it was really a, a, a good time. Um, I, I was with the um, mayor at the mosque, and um, uh, it, it was, it, they, we were welcomed warmly. Um, the mayor even got a chance to speak. And, um, but in addition to the worship, and we were there um, early evening, into later into the evening, where we actually came when one worship service was ending, and by the time we left, another worship service was going to start. They, I think the message was, besides trying to very much become a part of the community, was in addition to them being a place of worship, they really are... Um, are holding themselves out to be a cultural community center, um, and um, what programs they'll have over over the years will do, will be based primarily about about what their what their constituents actually want and need. Um, but they they are trying to reach out to the to the children, to the families, to the seniors, and it was um, they. They welcomed us warmly. They, there was a, a, a lovely meal, and um, you know they are new neighbors in town, and uh, especially the, the women. In terms of that, was the thing they were the most they were the most concerned about because if there's nothing we we've learned about their culture, it's that they they cannot uh, shake hands or touch touch a woman. So they were a, a, a little concerned when I walked when I walked in the room and. Um, even to the point that they gave us, they gave, handed us each flowers, but they couldn't hand me a flower. What they did is they ch they found one of the young boys who could hand me a flower, but one of the adult one of the adults couldn't even hand me a flower. Yeah, that was that was too much contact. So I think um, I know we spoke about it. I know I spoke to the chief. We spoke into um, to uh, the administrator that we're looking forward to putting together some. Um, program so that we can begin to learn and understand more of the customs and they can see what's going on in this community. Um, uh, something the mayor didn't mention um, is that we attended that, that oh, we, oh, we attended the vaping, sorry, I'm looking the wrong direction. We attended the vaping session. When I say a vaping session, meaning... You learned how to vape? Yeah, I learned how to vape. The uh, coalition put together a, a very informative, <laughs> instructive session. Uh, they brought in someone who is a health educator uh, from, um, uh, I think, the New Brunswick area, uh, did a very good PowerPoint presentation for us uh, about um, how they're influencing uh, the teenage population in terms of the vaping and the, and the different uh, vessels and, and methods that they use. Um, but the thing that really struck me, unfortunately, is there was nobody there. There were a couple of us and a couple of people from the Board of Ed and a couple of parents. 
but the <coughs> message was not getting out. And um, I'm, I, I'm saying it publicly because we have a wonderful resource in that we have a coalition person here who's really working hard to bring us interesting programs and somehow we're not reaching those who need to get reached. So whatever, though we have people of all different ages on this day, so there are people of all different ages in the audience, um, let's try to put our collective heads together and see what we can do to try to increase the participation and so, because it's, it's all educating our own community and it will be for our own benefit if we can get the message out to, to more people. Um, one quick question. I, I need to, I think this is for the administrator. Uh, the work uh, has begun on summit in terms of uh, the, the reconstruction of that retaining wall. However, what has happened is they've left the detour signs and the road closed signs when there is absolutely no reason for it to be closed. So the problem is all the neighbors know that there, there's no reason to be closed. No one is abiding by the law of closed signs. So that when the road truly needs to be closed, when that portion of the construction happens, I anticipate we may have a problem. Now, during the day, there was one police officer, but they just leave the road closed sign up and there's no reason to have it closed. So is that police or is that the police? That, would you, would you please explain and tell them that when the police officer's there, that's great, but the road is being closed for absolutely no reason. I was up there to take the chief. The, the, the law they have is to I guess the residents to understand this is going to be the pattern. That's but there is a, but, but it's really a problem. I'll, I'll talk to them over. That's not my fault. <laughs> okay, but what I'm concerned about is the residents all, all know that nothing's happening and when I left today, there were five cars, all of which completely ignored it because they knew there was nothing there. So when there is, in fact, something there, then what are they going to do? Have to go back down and back up the hill if the police officer isn't there? It's like yelling wolf. So when you need the road closed, close it because the the alternative is is very narrow and winding, and people are are not anxious to take the, old, the alternative out of it. Okay, so that's... I'll talk to you if I can't get this I, I, But I think, he, I think he has to realize that there is a detriment to the way it's being handled. Um, that being said, Happy New Year to everybody. We're not going to see... Uh, we won't be up here again until um, January 2nd. Are you... Um, January 2nd, we have a swearing in, but it's an earlier meeting, 6.30. So, um, Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you. I agree with you with the alliance, you know, that is the hardest fight all along is to get, and look, I, I do get calls from parents. So what are we doing to, com, you know, combat the, uh, the opioid addiction or what are we doing with the vaping or what are we doing about smoking cigarettes? Those are the same parents that probably should be at the alliance meeting to help them get things better. But getting that word out and get, you know, getting parents out at night is sometimes hard when you have young kids, I understand. But uh, they should try to make those meetings if they can, I agree with you. Uh, Councilman Jack Vetter. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to uh, real quick talk about the, just previously we passed uh, three resolutions, uh, two of them with the town of Bloomingdale and one with Wanakew. We also have resolutions that are interlocal agreements with you know, Riverdale, Wayne, Morris County Co-op. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's pretty something this uh, borough, uh, guidance of the Mayor and Council, Kevin, that we do a lot of interlocal agreements with our neighbors. We're always intertwined and, you know, trying to save the town money, save the other residents money. So uh, I think it's kudos. I realize people realize that, but always looking to save money and do things and, and shared services. So, so I know that's always something. Just the building department from uh, Riverdale. And the building department, right, exactly. So I just, just to, you know, to put it out there, just yeah, so people forget. But you know, it, works for both, it works for both sides. Mostly. Right, so which is good. So we're all looking out for each other. Uh, which I think is wonderful. I just wanted to real quickly uh, congratulate the Pride Lake Restoration Committee uh, for all the hard work and then all the participants that won here tonight. I think it was wonderful and uh, it's always good to have that uh, when the young people come in and see that, you know, it brings me back to my kids were young and Steve and everybody, a uh, great job over here what you do. Continue great work. I uh, also wanted to congratulate the uh, Police Lifesaving Award recipients. Uh, I know a couple of them. Uh, I was their FTO, which is a field training officer, so I'll take a little bit of credit. <laughs> Apparently, they were, they were engaged right, you know, they were taught right. So, uh, 
But I congratulate them because it's always, you know, nice to, to see that, you know, you always, uh, you're an officer, you go, you do your job, and it's always, you know, usually, listen, when you're an officer, it's always something bad. It's usually never something nice, you know, when you always need it. So it is nice to have something like this be recognized. And, you know, coming from there, it does mean the world, it does mean a lot to have yourself recognized. So I'm sure they appreciate it. I appreciate it. And again, kudos to them. Congratulations. Uh, real quick, also, I wanted to uh, let everybody know I attended the Board of Health and they passed the resolution 1806, which is now designated us as a uh, uh, substance abuse and mental health services, stigma-free, uh, stigma -free, which uh, made us stigma-free. Uh, and also some other good news that we got a grant from Chilton Hospital in the amount of 7200 So uh, with this, so I think it's wonderful news we got that. So it took a little time to get it going, but it's a great job by the health yeah, department. They applied yeah. for it, and you know I know Liz helped with this too. Um, yes, thank you, Liz. You know what this, what that stigma grant's going to go for right now is training of people to be trained in uh, identifying and working with stigma free. So that grant money is put aside specifically just for training mostly. Um, but uh, Liz was just telling me today that there is other opportunities, it looks like, for more grant money. And maybe with some time we can apply for more grant money with, with, for that. Oh, that's fantastic. Good. Thank you, Liz. Appreciate all your help. Uh, the other thing I had was the attended the holiday show and tree lighting. Uh, and Rob Walk and everybody down there, uh, they do a wonderful job. Thank you, all the residents, for coming out. And it's always good to see your neighbors and uh, people you haven't seen in a while. And it was always a good uh, attended event. Uh, and like, uh, the mayor said it's, it's even at night. It's amazing how we bring, even though it was rain out and it was a rain day. How we always bring the people out. Palm Lake always comes out, you know, in full force. They really do. Well, uh, that's all I had, mayor. Thank you. Yeah, you know, you can always count. You know, we knew that yeah. there was a little concerned that it was a rain date, and uh, um, you know, when you look back at Councilman President Riker said the day was beautiful when the first day was supposed to happen. But they were calling for a little rain, and they made that call, but the people still came out. So I thank all the residents for coming out and getting the date right and getting everything correct. And they correct. made the right call, because at, at 5.30 it started before. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Uh, Councilwoman Caldori. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say congratulations to the officers that were the recipients of the Life Saving Award uh, tonight and thank them for their service. I also want to offer congratulations to the winners of the Pride Composition Contest. It was nice to see all the kids and their families come out tonight. I know my son was very excited because two of um, one of the runners up and one of the winners were classmates of his, so he was very happy that two kids from his class entered and won. Um, not to repeat everything again, but for Toys for Tots, you know, I always remark about our, our sense of community and our collaboration efforts. And that's always evident in events like that. We have a lot of different organizations that come together. Tim Trost does an amazing job organizing it. The fire department um, and the whole community, the church passes out hot chocolate. And this year, the Girl Scouts actually reached out and asked if they could become a part of the event. Um, so we did have them in the crowd passing out candy canes. And that says to me that we have something that we do every year that is important to everyone. And as it grows, and becomes more attended, other groups within the town want to become a part of it and reach out and ask what they can do to enhance. And that, that's very special, that it's something that is so important and everyone wants to get involved. So I was happy to have them there with us this year, too. Uh, I did attend the December meeting for the Pompton Lakes Women's Club. The December meeting is always a very special meeting for us. We do a Christmas celebration. We have a nice dinner. Um, and members of the club are invited to bring nativities or menorahs, however they celebrate. We decorate a table with everyone's um, decorations. And the middle school chorus joins us to sing Christmas carols for us after we finish dinner. And we also inducted two new members this month. So the group is growing. We're doing great things for the community. We invite everyone to come out and join us at the monthly meeting and see what we're all about. Uh, we did have coffee with the council again. Last Friday, so coffee with the council was something that was started over the summer for members of the community to see that the council uh, men and women that sit up here are in fact accessible and we welcome you to come out and meet with us and talk with us and share some of the questions or concerns you have. Um, we were getting some response back on social media that the time, there was not a enough time being allotted so we did agree at our last uh, coffee that we are going to start an hour earlier. So instead of going from 8 to 9 on the first Friday of every month, we will be starting at 7. 
this past Coffee with the Council, four of us were there. So, you know, we won't always all be there at the same time, but there will always be someone there. We had some residents come out and introduce themselves to us this past month. It was nice. Uh, someone showed a great interest in hearing what each of us do and what our responsibilities are, so we were able to talk to him a little bit. So we look forward to seeing everyone next month, the first Friday of the month at Starbucks at 7 o'clock. Um, I did not have the opportunity to attend the Holly House tour this year, but I did see on the library notes that they had sold 54 tickets, which for a first-time event, I think is pretty amazing. Um, I heard the feedback that it was it was run very well. Everyone that attended it and everyone that participated said it was a lovely event, so hopefully they do that again next year. Uh, and just a reminder, the cybersecurity event is next week on the 18th and the 22nd. That is going to be at the Carnival Center. And that is an event that's being put on uh, with the Pompton Lakes Police Department in efforts to educate families on uh, ways that they can improve cybersecurity in their home, some of the games their children may be playing that they have some concerns with, uh, teaching kids about not giving out personal information to strangers online. So we welcome you all to join us for those that the first two of the first series is the 18th and 22nd and then there's two more dates in January after the holidays uh, and that is my report happy new year well we'd all like to congratulate councilwoman for her new purchase of a house here in Ponto Lake so I guess she's staying I guess I don't know what that means but um, uh, and, and you know I know somebody on the uh, tour who owned one of the houses and she was a little hesitant to do it um, she said she didn't she had such a great time doing it it was very enjoyable. Everybody who came to her house was very polite and nice, and she said she would do it in a heartbeat again next year. She really enjoyed doing it. So that's nice to see. It's one of the newer events that just yeah. came in. So that's nice to see. Councilman Bennett. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to also congratulate the, our police officers who received the life uh, saving awards tonight. And it's, you know, it's, it is a thankless job most of the time. You know, you only, you're, you're called when bad things happen, and, and to be recognized is, uh, is, is really nice. Um, to recognize our officers is really nice. The um, congratulations also to our uh, Pride Writing Contest winners and their runners-up. And uh, we heard some great work uh, tonight when, when they went up and read. And to be able to read in front of a huge audience like that is, is another is a huge accomplishment for some for some, these folks that are really young. Uh, I'd like to thank the Pride and Lake Restoration Committee, Steve Graberg, for all your work. Uh, one of the biggest testaments to your hard work is how beautiful our lake is and when, when our kids see how beautiful it is and, and want to keep it going, that's that's a huge accomplishment. Um, as far as the alliance, I was wondering if I'm sure they're reaching out to the Board of Ed because we as parents have to be at certain events at school, whether it be a play, not have to be, but we attend plays, we attend other functions at the school. So even if they carve out 15 minutes of that time to <laughs> corral some parents into a a room they rotate through at some point and might, <clears throat> since we're there anyway, mm -hmm. uh, might be a good, good. We had uh, parent teacher conferences uh, last week, I think it was Thursday through Friday or Wednesday through Friday in the evenings. Take 10 minutes, five, even yeah. five minutes to well, give some help. I, I know they, I just will jump in that they do, I back to uh, <clears throat> the meet and greet in school when they start school and middle school and, and they have a station and they actually get up a chance to talk, but you're, you're correct. Yeah. Trying to grab those parents when they're walking in, that would be a good idea. Well, uh, I'm bring that the part. art show coming up in the spring, so yep. parents will be filtering through the schools during that time anyway. Yeah. Um, so it's a train, another huge success. Thank you to all those involved. The call for the council, I volunteered to be the early person because uh, it does cut into my my work day when I leave here closer to 9 than it, you know, so I'll be there at, at 7. Um, we were at the breakfast with Santa. Oh, exactly. That was huge. That's probably the biggest oh, turnout right. we've had in the, I don't know how many years I've been going, but it was barely room to move, and and we might have to go to three seatings next year. I don't know. Work something out, because it was, it was pretty packed. Uh, the first seating I, I heard was more manageable. The second seating was just blown out. Holiday stroll was a good call to, for whoever made the decision. Was it you, Mayor? Helped. You helped. So you were part of one of the boats. <laughs> I didn't want to get wet. I held my breath because I wasn't sure if it was gonna actually gonna rain. When I went out to my, my, my Jeep that night to, to go where it was going, I saw it was starting to rain. I was like, all right, good. Um, that is t you know, I usually don't hope that it rains, but in that case, you know, had, had it not rained, it, it might have been ugly. Um, I was also at the mosque with the mayor and, and Councilman Riker and, and, and Councilman Bay. They were very warm and welcoming. Um, food was delicious, as, as Council, Council President Riker mentioned. Um, so that, that was a 
a good experience. I was at the Shade Tree uh, meeting, was it last night? Two nights ago. <clears throat> I want to mention that there's a, a spotted lantern fly. I'm going to put some information out. I'll probably share it from the Shade Tree Commission um, website. But apparently it's an invasive species that is making its way across New Jersey. There's three counties in southern Jersey that are uh, quarantined, <clears throat> apparently, since they are um, they spread via wood, um, wood traveling, so folks with Christmas trees, it's, uh, it's a concern. More information to follow. Uh, regarding the, the flooding and the mayor's meeting, that it's um, awesome news. Well, my wife, Lauren, says that was like a huge Christmas gift to her to, to hear that there, there could potentially be uh, region-wide coordination of, of river cleaning and getting other towns on board to help move the water out. And <clears throat> I have some anecdotal ev evidence. Um, back in 2014, we had some huge rainstorms. I, I know of engineers who work in Fairfield, and their job is to monitor the rivers in their area, or upstream in, in their area, to move equipment and whatnot, because they have their vehicles in, in the flood zone. And someone mentioned that, without knowing that all the work that we've been doing, they're like, wow, the water's draining out of Pompton really fast this year. And, you know, so that's some feedback from people that weren't aware of the work that we're doing. And that is my report. Uh, you bring up a good point, the breakfast with Santa. Um, there's a lot of hard work that goes in by our rec department to put that together. They, you know, it's an all-volunteer group that doesn't do, goes there. And like you said, it, there was 200-plus at the second seating. It was filled to the max. They have to feed everybody. Santa has to come in and talk to everybody. Uh, they all make little gifts and presents. It's a well-run machine at this point about the Santa. That, but, you know, the other side of that is, I will tell you this, because of the generation of Facebook and everything else, um, next year, if you want tickets for that, you have to get them early. A lot of people show up the day of trying to get tickets, and unfortunately, and we hate doing it, especially a five-year-old looking to see Santa Claus, tell them we have no seats for them to sit in. So, unfortunately, there were a couple of people we had to turn away. So, if you're interested in the event next year, please reach out early, get you know, get the information, and order the tickets. But always a great event, and I thank the Recreation Department for putting that on. Uh, no, you have uh, Councilman Big. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the Police Department uh, for their efforts uh, to the community and uh, congratulate the officers for uh, their efforts in this particular case. Uh, they did a wonderful job. You have the resident that's with us yet, and that's an important thing. Steve, uh, your committee always does well, and the kids did a great job uh, with their uh, writings and, uh, on the way. Thank you. I received the uh, Pompton Lakes Riverdale First Aid Squad report for the month of November from Chief uh, Sean Kalepi. There were 89 calls for service for the month of November, 46 in Pompton Lakes, 20 in Riverdale, 5 uh, duty calls in Wanakew. There were 59 medical emergency calls, 14 trauma injury calls, no CPR calls, 6 motor vehicle accidents, and 2 fire calls. I received the uh, Pompton Lakes Police Department report for the month of November from Chief uh, Moses Augusto. There were 1,739 calls for service for the month of November, 504 motor vehicle stops, 272 motor vehicle uh, summonses issued, 31 motor vehicle accidents investigated, no DWI arrests, 23 alarm conditions burglary, 15 alarm conditions fire, 11 fire calls, 52 ambulance requests, one burglary, and 15 theft calls, nine domestics, and no uh, sexual assaults or aggravated assaults. The Detective Bureau investigated 19 complaints, served nine summonses, and served no uh, warrants. I attended the Pompton Lakes Board of Education meeting on December 11th. The board received the report from the members of the Future uh, Business Leaders of America uh, at the Pompton Lakes High School. And this goes along with what Frank was talking about, uh, uh, this, what they uh, were reporting on. The program promotes an atmosphere. It's their, uh, it's, uh, it was the program on uh, Pompton Lakes stigma-free campaign which the clubs uh, promoted at the school level. The program promotes an atmosphere where people will feel free to seek help for mental illnesses, depression, alcohol, and drug abuse. 
the FBLA project, uh, this through assemblies, workshops from Pumper Lakes High School and Lakeside Middle School, and distributing information at the Pumper Lakes Holiday Stroll. They also will be sponsoring a stigma-free walk this spring to further uh, make the community further aware of the stigma-free. The board passed the stigma-free resolution which supports the FBLA campaign. I attended the Ponte Lakes Golden Majors meeting with OEM coordinator Al Evangelista. And on December 6th, Al spoke on winter safety tips and we distributed forms to sign up for uh, reverse 9 the reverse 911 program. I attended the Mayor Gelman Senior, Senior Center holiday party at the Elks Club on December 10th. All attendants had a great time. Food was good. And those teenage, teenagers of age went to rock and roll. <laughs> on December 8th, I attended the open house uh, dinner at the Al Mustafa Center Mosque. The affair gave members of the mosque the opportunity to introduce, introduce themselves to the community and for the mayor and council to welcome the Al Mustafa Center to, Pompton Lake, to the Pompton Lakes community. And that's great. So let's talk about the reverse 911 call because we've had a couple go out and I see that our OEM coordinators here too. I have residents calling me. Can they still sign up online on the computer? Okay. Yes. If they can't figure that out or can't make that happen, what's the next step for them? Call Sharon Sonny, that's what they should do, and she'll sign them up? Yeah, and then she took the forms that we had also. Okay, because I did get some calls about people not getting reverse 911 calls about the numerous things we've had. And, um, you know, the word spreads through the community, and then people say, why didn't I get the call? I said, well, you have to sign up, and so they can call Sharon. That's good. Uh, and also, just going back to the FBLA, you know, they're an award-winning group, nationally award-winning group for many years from Bompton Lakes. They, they go to nationals, compete with uh, places from all over the country, and usually take first, second, or third at some point in something. They They've put, done very well statewide, national -wise. Yeah, they put a lot of time and energy into it. Very good. Mayor, just if people who are familiar, it's future business leaders of America. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, professional reports. I have none. None. Minister's report. Just a couple, Mayor. Um, Council received my report. Uh, in the report was a synopsis of the police streets policy. As you know, Councilman Ryan, the report on last council meeting, it's a traffic calming uh, engineering study that was done uh, with funding from NJDOT, and we'll be reviewing that. And I'm putting out some information on the website to have final input from uh, residents area. Area individuals who have concern with traffic issues, and then we'll move forward on, uh, on how to adopt the policy. And we also have the same amount of trans options, and they're going to be doing a, a smart street safety campaign in the fall uh, of 2019 to try to, you know, uh, the pedestrian safety, things of that nature. So that'll, that'll be, you know, work with the schools, and Dr. Uh, Amorosa was there, and I think that'll be a, a, a good program. So if I remember correctly, they're going to actually have classwork within the schools themselves at different grades to set up to just teach younger children what a crosswalk is, how you react to that, what you do when, at, at, a, at situations. I think it's a good training facility to get that information out to younger kids so they understand early on what's going on. So hopefully that, that works well. Um, that's going to be fall of 2019. We're going to start working toward the end of the summer and we'll start gearing everything up. It will be fall of 19, the school is back in session, that, that's next September. Uh, NJDP notified me that they're going to be uh, uh, demoing of four houses uh, as part of their Blue Acres buyout. They did four houses about a year and a half ago. They have four now. They originally were going to buy out 19 properties. I do not believe they will buy out all 19. I'm not quite sure they'll buy out 10. And then some people... Ten. Some people change their minds. Um, so that nature. Some people didn't agree to uh, the dollar values. But right now, there's four more coming down, so be a total of eight that will, will have been um, demoed over, over the last two years. And those four will come down at the same time? In January, yeah. Are okay. those are the ones on River Edge? Uh, there's two on River Edge, one on Washington, one on Walnut. Right. But, there, but they will be coming down in January. And also, I gave the council the final version of the South End a pavement rating study, uh, which is what I'm going to try to use to be able to try to do road paving. It's not 
state funded. We only do roads that are funded by the state. And so we only talk about major roads, roads that have major traffic on Peter Road. I think it's time for Charlotte to do some of her own small local roads. And if we put $200,000 in the capital budget with a state contract, we could probably do just overlays and not get crazy and get a lot of roads done. So this particular study shows the rating from best roads in the south end to the roads that are horrendous. So you can kind of get a feel for what you're doing so you're spending your money in the right place to go forward. Right. So when residents question why we're doing roads in a certain way, it's because we had this study out there. We had the funding. We're going to use that as a template. Right. This way you can take maybe five roads at a time and get through the roads. Also, I found out, too, now, is that community development block grant money, which we received $80,000 this year, and that was just to do handicapped curbing. We can now, not only do the curbing, but we'll actually add paving into that. So now we're going to do a curb project, handicapped curbs, and maybe do a paving project, too, to get a little more bang for the buck. So we have to work out our own infrastructure because, again, the roads are talking about, like, you know, Broadway, you know, that type of thing. But that's not the normal side street. So we've got to really start working on some of our own side roads to get them upgraded. I talk to people all the time and tell me, you haven't paved. I've lived here 50 years, and I haven't seen this road be paved. And they're probably right. So it's time to make that transition to some type of paving project. Any questions for the administrator? Yeah, that's right. Go ahead. You go first. The curbing on Colfax, is that part of this? Well, that's county. We're actually going to apply for Colfax for special voice for the next state grant. That is kind of bad. That was the same question. Yeah, because I see them out there today. Yeah, there were lots of them out there. Even that, or are you just doing the curves? Handicapped, too. We're going to look to do that for half. That's it, next year. All right, good. Any other questions? Uh, one thing I should mention also is, uh, finally, it's been a long time coming, but if you've driven by the Salvation Army, they started taking down the building a little bit. They uh, have a machine there, and they've punched a hole in the side of the wall. That is the beginning of our first redevelopment project. Uh, there's been a lot of talk for a very long time about it, but it is changing our landscape, which is a good thing. It will bring in extra tax dollars, which is a huge help to us here in Pompton Lakes. And at the end of the day, we'll get... Residents in town will we'll get better tax dollars and we'll get nicer looking buildings. So that's congratulations to that to the bid and the planning board and zoning board. It's been a while, but they finally got their first project really moving forward. Okay, motion to open the meeting for public comments. Okay. Council President Reich. Second. Councilman Bay. All in favor? Aye. Against? Anyone from the public like to address? Please step up. Marshall, I'm Clyde Amber, 25 Pump Lakes, New Jersey. I am behind the redevelopment at the property. I, I just want to know what's going on with it, if you know. Which property are we talking about now? Nine. Nine. I'm five. Oh, okay. So um, they will be uh, taking down the nine, will be coming down, and they're building, uh, I think it's going to be six condos there, and there'll be no businesses on the bottom. Okay. Do they have, uh, I'm a, the river's right there. Do they have wastewater? Yeah, oh yeah, that'll be all through the county, and they'll have to go through all those procedures. They haven't gotten any permits yet. They haven't gotten reached that phase yet. They're at the um, phase of just putting a plan together. So now they'll have to go get all their permitting and all the things, and that's when the county will step in and give their uh, advice of what they think they would like to see there. We will give our advice of what we want to see there. Um, and it's a time-consuming project. It will take some time to get through all that. And then after they're done with that, then they will go to our, our building department and get all the proper permits to actually take it down and, and rebuild it. Okay, so they have to the next six months to a year before any construction starts, or? I would say six months, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah but I think they can get all that done. It's only one meeting. It's only a, it's a conceptual. Yeah, I mean, we haven't ever seen a conceptual. Right, yeah, right. They haven't made the plan yet. Yeah. Uh, there's just okay. talk of the plan. Um, but yes, they, of course, they would have to follow all the guidelines that the county and the state put in place for uh, water and uh, distances away and all that whole thing. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to address? Seeing no one, we have a motion to close the public session. So moved. Councilman Bennett? Second. 
Councilman, Councilwoman Palladori, all in favor? Aye. Against? Approval of the floor? Anybody have approval of the floor? Seeing none, I'd just like to say I wish everybody a happy holiday and a great new year because we'll be back in the new year. And we'll have new and exciting things starting in the next new year coming up. So <laughs> thank you. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. Councilman Jackanetta, Councilman Bennett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Did you get this? Last month? Yeah. Oh, man. I meant to.